Today's soap is a gift. I am making a 150 plus a couple uh, soap samples for my sister-in-law's wedding that is coming up in November, at the end of November. I offered to make wedding favors for her as the gift for her and her future husband. The colors of their wedding is green and blush burgundy. So I'm gonna attempt to make that. I'm also just going to have plain uncolored batter. So I'm trying to make like a swirl of the green and the and the blush. And also since this is kind of around uh, heading towards Christmas, it's the weekend before Thanksgiving. The green and red are kind of Christmassy, right? But then you're also really close to Thanksgiving. But all of my pumpkin scented things have vanillin in it. And I don't want vanillin. Don't give me vanillin because my uncolored soap needs to be at least the color of uncolored soap or whitish, but it'll probably be like an off-white color, which is what I want. So my fragrance oil I'm using is hot apple pie, which is a wonderful apple pie fragrance. And I'm also going to add just a splash of mistletoe because Christmas is coming. And mistletoe is, you th when you think of mistletoe, usually means you might be under it with someone that you love. And this is a wedding, and so it's going to be hot. I'm going to call it hot apple pie and mistletoe. So my colors, crimson red wine and lily pad green. And then the entire base of the soap, I am going to add a little bit of shimmer pearl mica to kind of give the entire little uh, wedding sample a bit of a sparkle because you know, snow's on the way and, and weddings are shiny and when you're in love, your eyes are glittering and, you know, it's doing all that. Um, and I'm going to show you the entire process. So how am I planning to cut them? First of all, I'll show you how I cut them and then I will stamp them. And then I plan to get a bunch of organza bags, put them in it because those are pretty. And I also plan to make an insert to go with it because wedding favors are a thank you. Thank you for coming to our wedding. So what am I going to include on that? And I'll just share all of that. This will be a four pound batch. Yeah, four pound batch. I'm making two two pound loaves. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is add our fragrance oil. There's also the shimmering mica powder in here and kaolin clay and powdered sugar. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's beautiful. That shimmery mica is doing its job of being shimmery. Okay. Well, we got all our oils, but now it's time to make soap. Here is our lye water. Okay, well there's a little bit of acceleration. I did not foresee that, so it's okay. We got our two colors. I don't want much, because I wanted most of this batter to be white. So maybe that much. I don't know how much that is, but that much. Ooh, very nice, very vibrant, thick color and consistency. Very nice. Okay. We are going to go ahead and start pouring here. Since for some reason it's accelerating. So our bottom portion
Okay. Then I want a little bit of separation between the red and the green, just a little bit. I just didn't want them exactly on top of each other, which they will be anyway, because I need to save a lot of this white. In goes our green, which is not pouring. So in plops our green. I can't believe how thick this is. I was not expecting any acceleration today. So I was wanting it to be topped with white. Didn't quite go as I wanted it to. Now I know my next batch is gonna be very similar. We'll do a little bit of a... These are all going to be cut up into tiny bars, so I really don't care what the top looks like, because you're not going to see the top very well. Okay, let's move on to the next batch. Okay, in goes... The fragrance oil and then all that. Kaylin Clay Sugar. Uh, shimmering Mica. Mmm, beautiful once again. Fly water. I had too much color the first time I did this, so I'm not going to add quite as much. Right now it's a little bit thinner than the first time, but it's definitely not going to stay this way. This time we'll do the green first. Mix things up. What do you say? Look at it pour. Wow. Like before, I wanted a little bit of a white layer on top of it. Separating the red and the green. both down. Now we'll be doing lots and lots and lots of cutting, which is exciting. See you then. Here we are the next day. Exciting business, isn't it? Looks like we got soda ash, but luckily I don't care because the tops don't matter when it's a bunch of sample sized things, does it? It's a little bit soft, but for the most part, it came out really well. Set 
that right there. Okay, let's see how this one goes. Should be pretty similar, right? Came out even easier. Cool. Look at that, pretty. Now I'm cutting all of these at a quarter of an inch. This was my first batch. And remember, all of these will have to be cut in half. That's a pretty plain one, but it's still pretty and plain. As in there's like no swirls, but I still like it. So all of these are going to be cut in half. Whoa, cool. Now you're asking me right now, are you really going to cut this entire loaf and record it? at a quarter of an inch. Oh, we'll just move, well, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll edit it for you so you don't get too bored. It's interesting these drops that are in here. If I have nothing to say, I'll just show you the, the end cut. Got a little muddied up there, I think, but it still looks nice. How is the fragrance, you might ask? I like it a lot. That mistletoe is quite powerful. Look at there. Got a little Christmas wreath at the top. But I can still smell the apple pie, so I believe it worked out well. Ooh, now there's a nice, cool looking swirl. Neat. Swirls are really getting fancy in the middle of the loaf. This red is really amazing. Remember, it's called Crimson Red Wine Mica from Crafter's Choice. If you want a really strong red, there you go. Well, a quarter of an inch was perfect. Look at these last two bars. We got some, some mistletoe berries there. So we got 38 bars out of that, times that by two. So that'll be perfect, because I need to make around 150 or so. So that'll be perfect, because we're gonna move on to our next loaf, which is gonna be another 38 bars. Let's see if this one looks any different. Of course, you can never tell by our first cut. <laughs> That's an interesting uh, design there. But you can tell I did the green first, huh? Because now we have a green ball instead of a red one. All right, where's my swirls? Bring on the swirls. They gotta be in there. Oh, we're finding them, here they come. And coming up to the end here, less swirls at the end. This was a lot of fun, cutting all these sample pieces. It's quite
quite a satisfying experience for me. I love the sound, the sound of cutting soap. Not exactly the wire hitting the plastic, but the sound of the wire going through the soap. I like that sound. You know what sound I'm talking about. This sound, listen. It's a nice sound. And our final cut for this project. It's 38 in total. So I'll film just a couple cutting in half, but not all of them. You don't want to see that. You probably didn't even want to see how much I showed you. All right, so I got it measured in the middle here. Take one of our beautiful swirly full-sized ones and slice her in half. So that they are even in height and then I will trim the corners I'll show that I'll show the entire process I think I already made that clear I'm gonna show the whole process show you one more and then I'm gonna go do this without you watching Here we are sitting at my computer desk and just a quick little demonstration of what's going to be happening to every bar. I will only be cleaning the long corners and then I'll decide which side do I want my stamp on. Got my stamp, a little bit of rubbing alcohol because it helps keep it from sticking. And isn't that beautiful? Now, I wanted to point out that you can actually see a difference in the soap color. This was my first batch, which accelerated a little bit heavier because I blended it a little bit more. And you can see that the white or the uncolored is actually a little bit more yellow than the second batch. There's a little bit of a difference, color difference there. Not too dr dramatic, but you, it's there. All right, now to do this to 150 more or so. Here we are. And they're gonna cure this way. Later I'll show you the packaging. All right, and the way that I'm packaging these little wedding favors is in a little ivory colored organza bag. Got my piece of soap here. They've been curing for over two months or something. And center it like so. Paper I'm inserting is Daniel and Whitney. Thanks for coming, November 19th, 2022. On the back, I'm including all the ingredients and I get to have my name on it down there. Nothing complicated or, or gaudy, just simple and clean. And that is that. We add it in with, this isn't all of them. I actually need to get more organza bags. I ran out of those, but that's where we are so far. Got this many more to package.